congratulations guys on the movie. Congratulations on your work. Um, I, I think one of the big telltale signs when uh, horror fans really appreciate something is when Halloween rolls around and it's like one of the most sought after costumes and you see a dozen tutorials online on how to do the Pennywise makeup. I, I've seen it myself. So um, with the bust that we have here now, can you kind of give us a little bit of insight and, and break down uh, you know, some of your thoughts into creating uh, the makeup for Pennywise? Well, certainly, yeah. It's, it's, actually, it's actually surprisingly simple um, in terms of, of the technique and the approach and the materials. It's, it's, it's Bill Skarsgård, right, with a big foam latex head and foam latex nose tip and two very subtle cheek pieces and all of this was built to enhance this smooth kind of egg-shaped quality of a, a very childlike uh, element to the character, including the larger head. And again, very simple. We got a life cast of Bill, we did sculptures, we did a lot of extra sculptures going in different directions for the director to try out different aspects and we finally arrived at the final look which was a, a foam latex makeup application. Now, uh, was this design set in place before uh, Bill Skarsgård was cast, or was did you guys already kind of have an idea of, of the design for Pennywise for the movie? There was some uh, design work done prior to Bill's um, casting. Um, in fact, Andy Muschietti, the director, is quite a good sketch artist, and he showed us a line drawing that he had done that was really gorgeous, and, and that's what we mainly used. And then it became an issue once Bill was hired, uh, we need to then d take that design and design it in the real world, bring it to life in 3D as a clay sculpture first and then as an appliance that an actor can actually perform in. Now, also with, um, the thing with this movie is that it, it seems the uh, practical effects and visual effects very, very well, like um, especially the refrigerator scene. It, it, it just, it flows so well. Um, did you guys work closely like with previs when you were, you know, um, especially maybe even some with the makeup, um, uh, like where Pennywise is, you know, is, is attacked and, you know, uh, some of those scenes. So did you work with previs in some of those scenes or, or some of those, uh, uh, the concept art for that? Nick Brooks uh, was the visual effects supervisor on the show and we had a number of conversations with him. Um, but normally what we do is we create a kind of a toolkit of practical effects pieces and then um, people have to kind of get their heads wrapped around them. So visual effects people, stunt people would need to see, you know, well, how, what can he do in this? What can't he do? And then they start kind of filling in the gaps and, and figuring it out. But those things, we provide sort of a, a, a rough range of t toys for people to play with and then um, they bring their skills to it and determine. I mean, uh, and, and yeah, that, that uh, overlap between the, the visual effects and the, and the practical effects is, is one of the best we've ever been involved with. Now, for horror fans, horror fans love seeing practical effects. Uh, it's been, that's been our conversations online and fan boards and forum boards. Um, what are your thoughts on, I mean, I know practical effects, I mean, it goes back to, you know, some of the George Romero stuff and um, uh, some of the old, you know, makeup artists like Rick Baker and, and uh, Tom Savini. So uh, what are your thoughts on, on the development with practical effects and blending it with, um, you know, animated visual effects, especially well, in horror movies? As a person, it's, it's funny to it's funny hear you say, you know, some of the old makeups like Rick Baker and Tom Savini. And it, it goes back to when I was a kid. And I'm thinking... All my favorite makeup artists were all black and white. I saw a color picture of making my makeup artists. No, the um, well, the over, like I said, the the overlap is it's it, to us it's great when the visual effects people come to us and say, give us as much as you can, real, put as much as you can in, in on camera, and and we'll work with it from there because now we know that there's something real that that, that inhabits the effect, right? There's something real, there's something practical, there's something that was really there on the stage, and everybody else was reacting and interacting, and the, the, the lighting and the atmosphere, everything is already locked in. So it's just now an, an aspect of creating that extra enhancement that's required. I think what, what we're finding, and like I say, there, there is a shift back to more uh, uh, practical effects, but uh, there are still times where people uh, uh, that are making those decisions don't get how long it takes to, I mean, it takes us less time to create a practical effect than to create a digital effect, but we need to create our practical effect before the movie shoots and that's what's hard is to go on a production and say, okay, we want to start building three months before you start shooting. That was that was basically the way things were done back in the 80s and the 90s, and now it's hard to 
get producers and studios to understand the importance of committing to us up front so we can deliver something great. So we're, uh, with Bill and Pennywise, what was the, uh, the application process like, like every morning when he came in? I mean, how long was, did it take to apply the prosthetics and then you know apply the makeup? So how long was he expected to be in the chair? Makeups like these generally, we're, we're asked that question from the get-go. Production always wants to know how long it, they're always dreading that it's going to take five hours or something like that. But this is about a two and a half hour makeup. You know, you've got full <laughs> coverage of the head. It goes down, cheek pieces. You know, it's not. We've got four little pieces here: nose tip, two cheeks, and a, and a head piece, and then the wig. So, uh, you know, and, and it, it is a mono, It's virtually monochrome with washes of, of color uh, in the cracks. But that gets pre-painted the, the night before, so you're not spending too much time. So it's about a two and a half hour makeup, and then about a, a thirty minute removal process at the end of the day. Okay. Now, for, uh, for our uh, followers and our readers and our viewers, um, I know you asked this question a little while ago, but for, for the uh, person who um, seeks to get into this type of business and, and, and wants to you know, work, work in this industry, what are your suggestions? How, what, what road would they, uh, would they navigate to get to that point? Uh, you know, what, what we found, the, the very best way to find your way into the right aspect of this, of this art, of this craft, is to go visit the Stan Winston School of Character Arts because that, that is a, a, it's basically an entire world. It was founded by Stan Winston's son, Matt, and his brother-in-law, Eric Lidoff, and it's, it's basically an entire world of everything that's special about special effects, whether it's makeup, whether it's prosthetics, whether it's animatronics, electronics, miniatures, stop motion, every aspect of, of special effects is really a, a kind of looked at and, and explained and, and broken down so people can understand it and it's, and it's a very user-friendly world.